At the end, we will pass on the floor to President Kwasniewski. Dear friends, don't worry, it will be not a very long speech, only uh, some uh, remarks and some uh, our greetings. Uh, first of all, I would like to say that uh, I'm uh, almost professional participant of, of various international conferences. And of course, maybe it's not good if the chairman of the board is speaking such words, but uh, Sergei Tihipko uh, some seconds earlier uh, said more or less the same. Uh, we particip are participating, we participated last two days in the one-off and maybe really the best international conference in the world. And that is really very, very <laughs> true. Uh, if you see the, not the list of speakers, if you see the topics, if you see the atmosphere, if you see the hospitality of our hosts, if you see the place, uh, historical place of Livadia Palace, all these elements um, uh, created such uh, highest quality in uh, intellectual sense, in political sense, in um, organizational sense of, of our meeting, and that is something what uh, for sure we will remember. Uh, Second, I think what is uh, really the heavy weight of our conference that we discussed uh, not only about such uh, important and very hard problems as Ukraine today or Ukraine before the election, but we discussed last days about really the strategy, about general problems of uh, mankind, of, uh, of um, uh, our continents. Uh, we are in the time of the change. And of course, uh, I'm sure that was nice, very funny beginning of our conference to discuss about this forecast of, of um, uh, my uh, that uh, 2012 can be the, the uh, year of the end of the world. Of course, I'm absolutely optimistic that uh, it's not a real danger for us, but the real problem for us is this change, which is uh, uh, to some extent uh, visible and predictable, but in many elements it's totally unpredictable. And um, we discussed last days about the future of new technologies, the impact of new technologies on our life, about medicine, about um, um, the new architecture of the world, new civilization and political centers of the world. This picture of the world is changing and we are the part of this debate, very wide world debate, worldwide debate about the challenges, the future and the possibilities. And this debate has a very special uh, element. We have a lot of questions, millions of questions, and we, we have only some answers, some responses. And that is why such conference, especially so well organized with such high intellectual level, is um, um, useful for us, important for all of us, and I'm sure the next year we'll continue this annual meeting of Yalta European Strategy. Two Short remarks. First, about Europe. I fully agree with last words of, of Tihipko and uh, statement of Carl Bildt here in this, in this room. Uh, of course, today, discussion about Europe and European um, further enlargement and about Ukraine in, um, as a next member or next associated partner of European Union is extremely complicated because we are, first of all, discussing about the crisis, about Eurozone, about Greece, Portugal, and so on. But uh, I'm sure that after this crisis, the first of all, Europe will survive and European integration will survive. And that is uh, really the most important political project maybe in the history of the civilization. If you want to compare European integration, you compare this integration only with the idea of um, uh, founding fathers of United States of, the, of, of, of um, uh, create this, this state in the North America. I'm sure that would be something impossible and uh, absolutely unbelievable to um, uh, miss this um, greatest opportunity to integrate Euro uh, Europe farther, to integrate Europe deeper, and at the end of the day to have Europe really as a one of the strong players, the most important players in the world next decades. If you want to next argument, maybe not so um, um, uh, well known, why Europe can be such a strong player in this uh, architecture of the world next decades, I give you the freshest one. 
Europe has potential. If you look at the list of classification of medals in the Olympics, the first is United States, second China, third Great Britain. But if you want to count only gold medals of all 27 members of the U European Union, we have more than 80 gold medals. We are much better as China, much better as United States, and it means that Europe still has unbelievable potential. That is important to know it and to, and to, to use it in the next, in the next year. So, why I'm speaking about it? Because if you discuss in Ukraine this alternative, what is best uh, or what is better to go to, to the West or to go to the East, my answer is very um, um, uh, simple. Of course, European Union has good future, will overcome the crisis and can propose for you much more what you need as other forms of integration. One day, if even Ukraine would be member of Euro-Asian zone, Euro-Asian Union, with Kazakhstan, with Belarus, with Russia, you will have same problems with monetization, which you have now, and you will go together to ask European Union for support to modernize your countries, and you will ask us about our experience, how we solve social problems, uh, healthcare problems, and all these problems which are the part, not of our only pro uh, challenges or, or troubles, they are, the problem, they are the part of European heritage. And today, even China and Russia and India and Brazil, they will ask all of us Europeans what to do with the healthcare system. It's not excellent in Europe, but it's much more developed and better as in other parts of the world. And I can name a lot of such elements of really strong, deep experience of Europe and European Union. And that is some, this is our know-how which we can offer Ukraine if you want to modernize your country, if you want to be really the part of this uh, Family, which has a troubles now, problems now, but will be, will exist in the future and will will um, play important role of the world. And second and last remark is uh, this uh, comparison, which is uh, interesting. Uh, can be Ukraine uh, as Poland, or can be even better as Poland? Minister Poroshenko was uh, so kind to say that, of course, Ukraine will be better as Poland. I wish you, of course, to be better as Poland, but. If you want to understand uh, how it's possible to be at least so good as Poland and this way of, uh, of, uh, and this way of, of transition, of this way of reforms, it's necessary to understand what was the real advantage of my country. The first and the beginning of our transition, we had very clear goals. The first was for security reasons, NATO. The second one was European Union. As long as you will not define by um, uh, consensus, political consensus, that, for example, European integration is your goal, it will be very difficult to organize common efforts and to reach this goal. Because that is important. Yes, we want to be. We don't speak about schedule. We don't speak about years, what, what we will uh, take time. But we should to have the goal. Poland had these two goals. Second, we organized for these goals really bipartisan support. We had uh, different governments. In the first part of Polish transition, we had a lot of governments, too many governments. Uh, uh, but each government was working in the same direction. Of course, one additional element for 10 years, Poland had extremely good president, but that is maybe a different, <laughs> different, different story. And then last point in this Polish experience, because I, I hear it here in, 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 in Yalta sometimes, well, you want to teach us and uh, you speak about our, your values and your standards and we have our own dignity, we have our experience and we don't need such teachers, such lectures, such uh, advice and everything. Okay, I understand, but that is a little bit risky approach because what means to accept European standards? It means that we accept something what is experienced, what was proved, what was created some um, um, systems in Europe. Systems not of, of conflicts and war, but system of democracy, protection of human rights, protection of minorities, competitive economy, uh, state of law, etc. That is really how you can jump forward because using all these standards. Because if you want to discuss about democracy in Ukrainian style, first of all, it will take a lot of time. But finally, 
result of so-called Ukrainian model of democracy is danger for you and for us, for all of us. <laughs> it's better to accept European model of democracy because we know what means this model. So I think understanding this uh, sensitivity, understanding this um, uh, special feeling of national dignity, especially in the country which in this very, very long thousand years history had only in very short periods own independent state. I understand and I respect it. But please look that accepting these European standards or European models and European experience, you can go faster forward. You can um, uh, overcome some our wasted time, which in our history happened some, some decades earlier, and to be closer to us or so good as Poland is now and even better. For Poland to be quite well-organized European country, not excellent, not the best, but quite well-organized country, took 20 years. Now, this year in Ukraine, we have 22 years of independence. And unfortunately, in Ukraine, we have, because this beginning of this uh, period of tensions is a second, mid of second term of President Kuchma, 2002, now we have 2012, we have some kind of cold civil war. It was a conflict between President, Prime Minister, Opposition, uh, Ruling Party, Victor versus Victor, Victor versus Julia, Julia versus Victor, Victor versus Julia, etc. You, you know, I know all these stories because I was a part of this of these conflicts, uh, not as an animator, but as a as a fireman, as, as, as a fireman who was asked to to help in this situation. So my advice is: is necessary this very long, 10 years, called civil war, to finish. I hope that everything what we heard now, that after this election, you understand the, this uh, necessity of the political situation, necessity of the economic situation, and you will be ready to cooperate, to find consensus. And the main role in this consensus concept of politics is, of course, on the side of the ruling forces. That is not the main role of opposition, because opposition has not instrument. But after the election, I expect, frankly speaking, important, very um, um, uh, gorgeous gestures of president, of, of new prime minister, of new government, because I think in this time is absolutely needed if you want to overcome the problems which you have here. And many of these problems are result of Ukrainian politics, not of global crisis, European crisis, Eurozone crisis. That is your, your job and your, and your responsibility. Dear friends, I think uh, we, we are tired and, of course, uh, we have a chance to continue our discussion about the future of Ukraine during a nice uh, dinner which is in front of us. Finally, I would like uh, to thank, um, uh, first of all, all of you, participants of um, our annual meeting, speakers. You know that we had uh, with us uh, students, all Ukrainian students, uh, and I, I very much appreciate that they participated in, in our conference because maybe that is the next generation of Ukrainian politicians, and uh, they had um, uh, they get here good lesson uh, of uh, of political of political thinking. I would like to thank my fellow board members and especially these who are still with me here: Mario, Jean Pierre, Sasha Rar. Uh, and, and that is um, uh, your success also. Uh, I would like to uh, thank Pinchuk Foundation, especially two leading person in this team, Thomas, please applause for Thomas Weye and, and Julia. <laughs> Friends, a special partner, DTEC, and partners, Alpha Bank Ukraine, International Renaissance Foundation, Onur Construction Company, Shell, and Visa. And I think that is a good <laughs> to applaud this company. I want to thank Yalta team and its director, Ivana. <laughs> Ivana, thank you. Great job. Great job. I tell you, I was in my life a uh, journalist, and I understand that um, uh, among us, many journalists, now even this journalist is too many in the world, but to be excellent, fantastic, outspoken journalist is not easy, and we had these days with us one of the best journalists in the world, Christia Freeland. Thank you very much for your job. I, I, appreciate, I appreciate very much uh, her knowledge, her uh, determination, her charisma, and uh, tough 
hence uh, when it was necessary to use, so thanks Christian. And finally, last but not least, dear friends, I think uh, that is fantastic when on our way we can meet uh, the very special, very unique person. And uh, I think uh, this man is uh, the best combination of uh, uh, business success, very good taste, fantastic um, feeling of politics and such very strong um, responsibility of own country, of the future of um, uh, own country. I'm speaking, of course, about the founder of the foundation and our host during these days in the Alta, Victor Pinchuk. Victor. Thank you, Victor, and really that is a privilege for all of us that we met you, because that was uh, by chance, but it was fantastic. It's, it's really one of the best what happened in our life, and we are uh, so grateful for you. Uh, dear friends, before I will um, invite you to the next um, meeting, I want to say that after this uh, clo con uh, closing remarks, we will have a short movie, but before I want to inform you that this ninth annual meeting of Yalta European Strategy is finished, is closed, and I invite all of you and new guests to the next 10th annual meeting of YES next year in Yalta. And I promise and I expect that it will be after the election, but uh, don't worry about topics, don't worry about problems, don't worry about domestic Ukrainian situation. We'll have a lot to discuss, we'll have a lot to think. That is for sure um, uh, decided even now, one year before next meeting. Thanks a lot and all the best for you.